I was one of over th uh, around 300 people, I would say 320, something like that, that lost their job um, statewide because of the budget. I'm a case manager um, for people with developmental disabilities or intellectual disabilities. That just means I coordinate their services, make sure that all their funding is in order, um, you know, that people are following their individual plan and just that they're making progress on goals. Going through losing my job over just funding was, that was a huge blow in my life. It was really, it, it did me in for a while just because I loved my job. I loved my people. And it was just like a betrayal, even though I understood where it was coming from. Um, it was hard, but the fact that I have a phenomenal job right now with, you know, the new caseload helps me, you know, heal the wounds of my last caseload, you know, and it's, you know, cause you build rapport with people over years and years that you work with them. Um, so that was tough, but it's good. It's okay. And I can see my future with this company. It'll be, um, it'll be great. I started my new job September the 14th and I was diagnosed with COVID on September the 17th. So my first week was mm, interesting. After 187 days of never leaving my house with my positive test. Yeah, my daughter brought it home. Um, here in Georgia, the restaurants have been open since April 27th. So she works at a restaurant and um, some people came down with it at her restaurant, but they didn't close. So I was on steroids for about eight weeks. So my health insurance didn't kick in until November 1st, my birthday actually. And um, so from August 31st to November 1st, I didn't have health insurance and here I am on September 17th with COVID. Um, so what I did is I followed a, you know, an action plan that my previous pul pulmonologist had, um, you know, with prednisone, I had medication stocked and I just kind of got myself through it. I worked all through COVID. I, I mean, I took the two days off that I literally couldn't function because of fever. And then that was it. I was just back doing it. And um, I don't remember a lot of that time, but, <laughs> but um, here we are, you know, <laughs> we're alive. <laughs> I took my new job, you know, I knew what the salary was. It was a pay cut and knew that. <laughs> Um, but then the things that you don't know, like, oh, well, the health insurance is also quite a bit more. And so your take home pay is going down and down and down to the point where I couldn't put my own daughter on my health insurance. I couldn't afford it through this job. I would, I, it was literally, there was no way to do it. So she's actually on the Affordable Care Act for the first time. And she's only 21. Um, I had hoped to be able to keep her until she was 26. Um, but we could, there, I mean, there was no way. I could swing it, but hey, I have a job. Like I said, I mean, some of these things, they come, they get me down and I get annoyed about them, but I have a job. I would want people to understand, um, you know, it's real. It doesn't kill everyone. And I understand when it came about, you know, people were dying and, you know, there was a much higher rate, but that doesn't mean you should put your guard down because it's a nasty, nasty virus. It's no fun to go through. Um, and it can last long. I still get headaches. That's something that hasn't gone away is my COVID headache. Um, who knows how long it's going to last? You know, I still miss my old, my old coworkers. One of them just passed away October 30th. I didn't get to say goodbye to her. Um, you know, so that's been bothering me, but, um, it got better. It's better. You know, it's, it's better. I'm alive. I survived it.